Hello again, beautiful artists, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic painting tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So make sure to hit subscribe so you can join the fun and paint along, and don't forget to hit that bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. All right, so happy spring, beautiful artists. I wanted to do some florals for spring, groundbreaking, right? <laughs> but make it a little bit with a Southwest flavor. Um, so we're gonna be doing some cactus blossoms today with a gorgeous and simple sort of sunrise type of background. I have my four standard brushes for this painting. So I have my big square brush. I have a medium sized round pointed brush and then two small detail brushes. Gonna get those in the water cup off the side of the screen. If you'd like to see a full materials list of everything that you need to paint along, go ahead and check the description box below. The colors that I'm going to start for today's background step, really simple, just gonna have a little bit of red, a little bit of yellow, and some white. All right, let's go ahead and jump on in. We're gonna grab our big square brushes with a little bit of water on it to start with our background gorgeous sunset or sunrise colors. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of my red here and sneak just a little bit of white into it to make this absolutely gorgeous pink. And I'm going to just bring that right across the top part of my canvas here, going back and forth, making sure that the paint soaks into the, the texture of the canvas there. A little bit of water always helps the paint go nice and smooth. And we're just gonna be working our way down from the top here with a really simple gradation. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of yellow and some white, and I'm gonna create a really pretty peachy pink orange, something about like so. And that's what I'm going to use to start blending my way here down to orange. Let's go ahead and blend a little bit of orange up, nice and pigmented, which is just, of course, red and yellow together. If you need a refresher course on color theory and how to blend colors, I do have a course on that. More information below, but we're just jumping in and trying it for ourselves today. So mixing up orange just by mixing together yellow and red. Look at that gorgeous, vibrant color that I'm getting. Love that. All right, and then just blending the two colors together. Don't be afraid, come up into the pink. All right, and a little bit of yellow here towards the bottom. We're gonna kind of sneak that into our orange for gorgeous yellow-orange color. Working our way all the way down. This painting was very much inspired by my current surroundings here in the high deserts of the American Southwest, where we have gorgeous sunrises and sunsets. Almost on a regular. Let me know in the comment section if you've ever been to the Southwest and have seen them. <laughs> little bit of yellow here towards the bottom. Not really washing my brush because I like to have a little bit of that color variation, but I do want it to be pretty sunny yellow down here at the bottom. There we go, like so. Look at that soft, beautiful gradation. Okay, and you can just stop at this point uh, for a midway break and let this layer dry if you're happy with it how it is. Or you can add a little bit of white in here and there for some clouds. I think that looks nice. Just to have a little bit of additional color variation here up in the sky. Maybe you pull a little bit of pink further down. Just like so. Looking good. And just playing around with some streaky clouds if you want. That's an optional step. Less is more with that step. All right, let's go ahead and let this layer dry and then we're gonna come back and add a whole bunch more. So I'll see everyone in a few. Okay, welcome back artists. We have a dry background and I got some fresh colors in my piece of palette paper here. So I have a little bit of ultramarine blue, um, some violet purple, 
little bit of bright yellow, some phthalo green, and a little bit of black and a fair amount of white. I rinsed my brushes and got fresh water at break as well. All right, let's go ahead and jump right back into it. So for this step, I'm gonna grab my second to smallest brush. If you'd like a little bit more control, you're welcome to use your very smallest brush, but I like to use this guy right here. So a little bit of water on my brush. I'm going to pull over some of my gorgeous green with some white and a little bit of yellow. And this is going to be my sort of base cactus green color, which is the color of my nails. <laughs> if you notice there, I'm gonna do a little almost color match there and we'll coordinate. Okay, and I always start smaller so that I can make things bigger, but what I'm gonna be doing here is sort of blocking out all of these little cactus shapes. And they're just going to be little ovals, like so, starting here at the bottom. That looks just about the right size, but if you wanted to adjust, you could sort of bring the line out a little bit further. And then these cactuses grow by like having these little pads come out from the top here and they can go in different directions and different angles here. So I'm gonna do sort of like an oval shape there, which is going to be one that's sort of facing its profile towards us more. And then another sort of big one here for the base. It's very windy here today. I don't know if you guys can hear that. It's crazy. Living life in the desert. Okay. And then maybe this one comes out to the side. You get to kind of build whatever kind of cute little cactus you would like. Very nice. Okay, I'm just kind of making things a little bit bigger here and there. That looks pretty good. All right, now I'm going to fill it in with my medium-sized brush. And again, you can always downgrade your brush size if you'd like to have a little bit more control. And we're just going to be filling in our gorgeous cactus. But rather than filling it all in with one color, we're going to do a little bit of really pretty variation. Okay, so I'm starting with that gorgeous cactus green. And I'm going to start adding that green to my little cactus pads, but I don't wanna fill it all in. I wanna have some areas where I start to sneak in a little bit of purple, which is just so pretty. I'm gonna mix a little bit of white into that purple. like so, a little bit of purple and then it almost turns sort of like a gray color which is just gorgeous. Just like so. So that's one of our cactus pads. We can kind of play around with it too however you like. Maybe add a little bit of a highlight too. Do a little bit of wet on wet blending here. And then the purple doesn't need to be in the same area on each cactus pad. Okay, so each one of these is going to be a little bit different with our tones of green and our gorgeous light blended purple. Okay, just like so. And I feel like I'm a little bit on the dark side here. So I'm just gonna lighten it up ever so slightly. There we go. Okay. I like to have areas of both light and dark here. Lots of little variation. Feel free to downgrade brush sizes if you're working on very small areas. A little bit of green on one side, super cute. 
looking very pretty. We want to keep our most outwardly lines here. Okay, very outside edge there, making a nice crisp edge. Okay, just like so, taking our time in each little cactusy area. You can either sort of fill in part of it with purple and blend it together with green, or if you're doing a really light color, like this light green, you can also sometimes just sneak a little purple in afterwards. Less is more. So just little tiny amounts of paint to try it out first. Okay. You can sort of build up the color as needed. A little bit of purple in each area. I like that, that looks nice. Okay. Some areas I'm gonna let be pretty purple and some areas might be a bit, a bit more green. Okay, looking cute. All right. Moving along here, a little bit of yellow too. Some parts of our cactus might be pretty vibrant. With that gorgeous green, look at how pretty those subtle colors play off one of another. Okay, a little bit of white maybe in this guy. All right. Coming up from the bottom too, we want to have a clear definition between the two. Don't want one big blob at the bottom. Just sneaking in a little bit of a darker green there so that they have a, di a differentiation. Okay. Try my best there to get a nice crisp outside line. And almost finished here with our base colors, a very important part. All of our gorgeous, subtle gradations. A little bit more purple. Lovely. All right. And our last little cactus pad over here. All right. Looking good. Filling that in with the base green, I think a little bit of a yellow green would be nice on this guy. On one side, and then maybe we're doing a light purple on the other. Nice. Lovely. Okay. I'm gonna grab my second to smallest detail brush real quick as well. And just real fast, I'm gonna sneak just a teeny bit of black in to make sort of a grayish green. And just use that to clean up any little areas that I want and add just a little bit of shadow sort of at the base of where these guys are connecting. Okay, like so. but not complete outline, just a little bit of shadow here and there. Okay, very subtle, the 
but just kind of cleaning things up ever so slightly. All around the different shapes. Okay, nice. How cute is that? All right, I'm gonna grab my very smallest detail brush now. I'm going to add a few things with this guy. So first, I'm just gonna have this very small brush with some nice control here with my same sort of base cactus green color. And I'm going to add a little sort of oval shape right here that's going to be one of our little blossom buds and then we'll have one coming up here as well this one's going to be sort of a triangular shape as it starts to open okay super cute and yeah, let's do one more over here just like so Super duper cute. Okay, we are gonna have a flower sort of dead center. Also, these are sort of our little accessory flowers. I'm going to come in here with a little bit of a darker color and do a quick little shadow on the side here that faces the ground. Just like so, a little bit at the bottom as well just for a little bit of three dimension there. All right, and before we add our blossoms, we're gonna let our green dry a little bit. So resist the urge to work on that uh, cactus anymore for now, besides these little thorns that we're gonna do here in just a second. So I've mixed up some of my dark green. I'm gonna sneak in just a tiny bit of black for a nice dark green. And with my little brush, I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of little spikes. They're all sort of gonna be facing up and down, but sort of a little bit diagonal here and there as well, um, depending on sort of how your cactus pad is oriented. Okay, so these are all facing up and down as to the bottom part versus the top part of this cactus here. Cactus segment. Little tiny flicks of the wrist. You don't wanna to go too heavy handed. And especially on these very tiny ones, very, very small brush strokes, okay? Teeny tiny little brush strokes. Very pretty, and yet so fierce. <laughs> That's why I like cactuses, they have boundaries. They say you can love what you can't touch. <laughs> and especially they blossom, which is just so beautiful. And the cactuses are not quite blossoming yet. I'm sort of looking f uh, ahead forward here into the future with this painting. But I'm pretty sure, this is my first full year here in the Southwest, but I'm pretty sure that they are blossoms first and then they turn into the prickly pear cactus fruit, which I did eat quite a few of last year. That's right when I got here. So I'm sort of watching the process. <laughs> Right, and a little bit bigger brush strokes here in the bigger sections. So these are going to be slightly bigger pads. A little bit further, like closer to us here as well in the foreground. All right, very cute. And so simple. Really, just a few steps to create. All right, I'm gonna leave this sort of in between area. I think I'm gonna connect my big purple flower right there. 
So I'm not gonna have too many spikes around that so that I don't have to use too much paint to cover this dark green color. Okay, but we're always kind of working from the background to the foreground. Okay. Last little area here. Cactus is looking very spiky, but there's actually another step to that, <laughs> which is going to be to do our white. But let's go ahead and let that dry just for a, a little bit because it looks like this area is dry enough to add our blossom. First layer here, so we're going to take some purple, some violet here, and mix it with a little bit of white. But I still want it to be pretty purple, pretty pigmented. Okay. And I'm going to just do all sorts of brush strokes coming out around what will be my center there for a nice sort of head-on flower here in our composition facing right at us okay beautiful and then i'm just going to do a yellow center a little bit of yellow and white. Just gonna add that right in the center there. And go ahead and let that layer dry for now. We'll add a little bit of highlights and shadows there in just a minute. But we're gonna go ahead and add our other gorgeous purple blossoms. So we're gonna have one flower starting to open over here. So pretty. Just like so. Maybe this flower is more open, but facing away from us. Like so. And then this one, not quite open yet. Just a little triangular shape there at the end of the green. Super pretty. All right, let's let that dry for just a second. I'm gonna grab a little bit of white. And yes, I'm going to come back into all of these tiny little brush strokes that we just did. And I'm going to do a very light highlight on most of them. Okay, just a little highlight for some texture and some interest right alongside your green. You don't want to cover the green too much. They kind of go right next to each other and this is very much a detailed step. So this is very, very light handed. Just like so. Okay, always making sure that this brush doesn't come with drips because it usually does. So it's so small, the water might get sucked up into the base of the bristles. Always brings a big drip right on my detail work. <laughs> I got some new brushes coming in the mail doing a materials upgrade this week. Pretty exciting stuff, so stay tuned. It might not be here for next week's tutorial, but for now we're just using the old trusties, old brushes. We needed a materials haul last night. <laughs> okay, little highlights here and there, just working our way through that whole thing again. Just like so, so cute. Very clean. 
palm position today. Keeping it simple. Originally I had two types of cactus. But I decided just to stick with this really cute prickly pear type. Because they are a little bit of work. I like to be able to just keep classes short and manageable and digestible. So we'll focus on one cactus at a time. Okay, just like so. And final little area. We'll go back to our blossoms and add a few little details there as well. It's okay if your white is turning a little bit green. It works too. Okay, lovely. Then I'm going to grab my yellow again. Let's go back into the center here. I just wrenched my brush really quick. But I want to have a nice solid yellow center here. Just kind of tapping that in there. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of white and just have a little bit of white texture in the center as well. And I want to make sure that my purple is nice and solid everywhere as well. I'm gonna grab a little bit of blue to go right here at the center for an adorable little shadow with, instead of a dark purple, we'll do it with this blue, which I think looks nice. These little details, very pretty. I'm gonna do sort of like a purpley blue here to do a little bit of color variation here at the base of our slightly unopened flowers. Okay, and then just a little highlight as well. Gonna grab a light purple. So pretty. And just a little bit of a highlight along the outside edge of our cute little center flower, giving him a lot of attention here. And a little bit of highlights here as well. All right. Very pretty. You can put any other final details that you'd like on your painting. If you painted along today, I would love to see your work. And I've created a Facebook group called The Art Club that's specifically designed for my students to share their work. Go ahead and check the description box below with a link to join. I also have some exciting new Zoom offerings to tell you about. The first is a free live webinar happening Saturday, June 18th on how to start a home-based arts and crafts business. This free 90 minute crash course will go over how to get started making money from home with your creative skills. Uh, then if you need help building your business, I'm offering a four week personalized workshop on how to do just that. And it's called the Entrepreneur Academy. We'll go over website building, graphic design, SEO, and a whole lot more. Summer session for the Academy starts July 9th. I'm also now offering private live Zoom parties with one-on-one -on -one instruction from yours truly. You can find out more about the Zoom offerings on my website, skyprat.com or in the links below. That is all the instruction that I have for everyone this week. So let me know what you thought of today's painting in the comments section below. Love to see you over in the art club. And until next time, stay creative.